Tamaka Tamaka base, base, and I'm saying, I'm saying, saying. all praises to the most high, the prime creator, all praises to the Lord Melchizedek, the savior, so to Atlantis, to Houthi, to Egypt. I give thanks for the return of the Holy Spirit, the true giver of understanding. Yeah, like no time before, at least in our recent history, as there have been such a huge cloud of doubt going around. Nothing is guaranteed, not even tomorrow. And that's kind of messing everybody up. We are being tested. We went through ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and now we're seniors and we taking that final exam. Earth is a school if you ain't get that by now i'm telling you now earth is a school you went through trials tribulations happiness everything and now everything you've learned out of all those circumstances is being put to the test all your convictions and everything you say you stand on You've been tested to see if you really believe what you say you believe. Because Earth goes through cycles. The same way we all go through cycles. There's seven cycles. And within each cycle is seven cycles. So we now are on the seventh cycle. We are being tested for far too long, especially in the West. We can easily say we believe this, we stand on this, we got convictions on this, and it's never going to be tested. But the good thing is, a lot of us have been awakened a long time before the plague hit. So now it's our duty to help the ones who have just awakened and give them the information and the support they need to get through these times. So I'm talking to the seeds of Israel, sons of God. Go by many names. But once you heard that they was trying to give you that poison and your spirit was like, hell nah, I'm talking to you. If you heard they giving that poison and you was like, yes, I can't wait to go back to norm. I ain't talking to you. You might as well just go somewhere else. All right. So why are they throwing this fear all over the place? And. They're directing a lot of that fear to us melanated people. And they do it in a way where they, they're pretending they care about our livelihoods and our well-being for the first time. When there's a whole bunch of other shit going on in our communities that actually shows that there's more death and disparity going on. And the answer is, is because you are the seed of Israel. All right, so we're going to dig deep in this word fear, and we're going to use Webster's Dictionary in the 1820s. Webster says, fear to terrify. And it goes down and it says, to feel a painful apprehension of some impending evil. So basically, whatever is making you feel that way externally, your spirit or your soul is telling you that it is evil. All right, so I know a lot of y'all going to try to get slick and you're going to say, well, the Bible also says you have to fear God. But fear has more than one meaning. As Webster says down here, to reverence, to have reverential awe or to venerate. All right. And they even go as far as to refer to the Bible. For I fear God in Genesis. So I don't even have to say nothing. 
Webster already gave you the reference, the point of reference where to go back in the Bible to see where fear actually meant reverence. It doesn't mean to be scared of the most high. So now the word reverence, if we want to go deeper, means honor or respect felt or shown. Now, I ain't even going to hold you. They got me on that too. Like they said, the English language is an evil language. And you got some tricky people that went in that book and started shifting things around. And only when somebody got the Holy Spirit, you can pull these things up and, and, and disseminate them. Because them boys is tricky. And I ain't like I said, I ain't going to hold you. They got me too. They got everybody. Because we Jamaicans, we always say we God-fearing people and all that. We always say that. So they definitely got us with that one. So now we know fear has polarities. It got a positive and it got a negative. So how does fear affect the body now? See, most of us think it's your brain. It really affects where you get the feeling, but that's not where it's stored. You store your fear in your solar plexus, a little bit below your navel. Study your chakras, people. You're going to need to study that. That is where your fear lies. You go on stage to perform, you feel butterflies where? Your stomach, because that's where your fear is. And in order to um, stop that, you have to kind of suck your stomach in and send that energy that you got in your stomach, you got to send it straight to your pineal gland. And then you have to start thinking correctly, because that's what fear does. It makes you think erratic. Any emotion, if it's unbalanced, you will always make the wrong decisions all the time. And this one is a big one. When they are inflicting fear on you, again, remember we said, the melanated people are the creators on this planet. And sometimes the ones who rule, they want to create an environment. Now, they don't have the capacity to do it, which I can't even go into now. So they have to make the creators create. When you are afraid of some shit, right? You play that scenario in your head about 30 times of 30 different ways it could possibly happen. And none of them is positive, right? So you're creating that environment of fear for them. Cause you got to think about it. No matter how many cameras they put on these cops, they continue to whip your ass. And ain't nothing come of it. And even the ones that do get arrested, the other ones don't learn nothing. They're going to whip your ass anyway. Because this has to be presented to you in order for the creators, which are you, to keep creating this reality for yourself. They study universal law. And they know how to use it. And they know how to operate it. And they're going to operate it on you until you decide you're going to use it too. Because you can use it better than they can. That's why they need you. They are using mentalism on you. It goes, the mind is all the universe is mental. That means before anything becomes material, it has to come from the mind of a creator. Now, that's one of the seven hermetics that they're using on you. But if we want to take it a little further metaphysically, if you study the tree of life in the Kabbalah, everything has a mother and father except for this plane where we live. They remove the mother and father. Surprise, the mother and father is you. They've been hiding you the whole time. You are the secret. Well, I set up a graph there. You could kind of go through that graph. I kind of filled them in. So um, put in all the names. There's, there's a lot more that goes to that, but that's the simplest form that I could put in right now. So now... Their fear-based tactics is based on the fact that they need you to create. And fear is evil on the negative polarity. So they want you to create an evil environment. So now you're faced with the choice. You're going to help create evil or you're going to help create good. Now, I never said creating good is going to be a walk in the park. But it says if you believe in the most high, he's going to walk you right through this. So I know black folk, they like their receipts. So I'm going to come with some receipts now. We're going to read from the Emerald Tablets, Tablet 3, The Key of Wisdom, translated by Dr. Doria. If you don't know what the Emerald Tablets is, you know, guess you got some homework to do. It says, 
he who oversteppeth the law shall be punished, for only through law comes the freedom of men. Goes back to those seven hermetics that they're using against you. You need to learn them so they cannot be used against you, but you can use it against them and navigate through this world. Then we're going to talk about fear now. Cause thou not fear, for fear is a bondage, a feather that binds the darkness to men. Remember, fear is evil. So this goes back to the definition that Webster gave us. All right, so now we're going to go to the Bible. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So that goes back to the definition of fear as reverence to show honor and respect. So don't be going home now talking about you a God fearing person. So now we know the fear that they're trying to impress on you is basically evil and they're trying to bind that to you. So let's go to Hebrews 2 verse 15 and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So all your scary asses that's doing things against your own will, against your own spirit or soul, is subject to bondage. So what I'm saying in a nutshell is you have to be strong and single-minded in your convictions. If that's your belief, you got to stick to it. They're going to squeeze you. They're going to try to remove you off your square. You got to stand 10 toes down. Stand firm. So you have the higher power. You have the superpower behind you. You got to stop thinking that they the superpower. Man can't do nothing that God didn't allow him to do. God allowed them to test you, to test your convictions. So now you got to show and prove. That's all it is. And I'm going to end it like that. Hey, yo, hey, yo a bitter, 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 bitter